Our deepest condolences uh, to the constituents of uh, Winnipeg South Centre, of course, to Mr. Carr's uh, family and friends uh, on his passing. Uh, he was only in here last week passing his bill, so it just shows uh, how quickly things can change in our lives. And then we lose friends and family uh, in, that, in that way. Carr was diagnosed with blood cancer and kidney failure during the 2019 federal election campaign. He died at home with his family around him at the age of 71. Carr served in the Manitoba legislature between 1988 and 1992. He became an MP in 2015 and served in several portfolios, including as Natural Resources Minister, International Trade Diversification Minister, and Special Representative for the Prairies. As a mark of respect, the House of Commons has, a, Commons has adjourned until tomorrow morning. Let's bring in the CBC's Karina Roman live in Ottawa. And Karina, tell us about Jim Carr. I mean, really, it's incredible just to see the outpouring of, of, well, of support and just kind words from so many. Absolutely. And you're getting glimpses as well as to his personality uh, and who he was as a person, not just as a politician. Um, he was a husband, a father, a grandfather. Uh, he used to play the oboe with the Winnipeg uh, sy Symphony, um, which shows just, you know, how diverse and, and multifaceted people can be. Um, as you mentioned, Andrew, he entered federal politics in 2015. Um, quickly became a cabinet minister. As you said, he held the natural resources um, position. He also was the minister for international trade and diversification. It was during the 2019 election uh, campaign that he was diagnosed with uh, blood cancer, but he went ahead and ran anyway and won uh, and decided to serve. Now, he did step away from cabinet, uh, fully understandable, because he had to go undergo treatment. But because the Liberals uh, didn't fare so well uh, in the prairies uh, during that election, he, Justin Trudeau asked him to be the special representative for the prairies, and he said yes to that. Um, now, during his illness, uh, uh, he went through chemotherapy. Uh, he had to have dialysis for his kidney failure. Um, he did have a stem cell transplant, but that was much delayed because of the pandemic, but he did go through that as well. And so all through that, all that treatment, he still worked as an MP. Uh, he still either showed up virtually when it was during the pandemic or more recently, he still came to the House of Commons uh, every day uh, and, you know, showed up for work. And people say that that's a testament to how committed he was to his job and to his constituents. Uh, last week, his private member's bill, which was building a green prairie economy, passed third reading. Uh, a huge accomplishment, a big feat, especially since it turns out he was uh, clearly more ill than some people thought or, or understood. Uh, and yet, you know, as his family says, he worked right until the end and, and showed what he could accomplish uh, right until the end. Yeah, I think it, it was just a little bit shocking because, of course, people knew that he had been sick, but we saw him on Power and Politics. He was mm -hmm. passing that bill. So we could hear that gasp in the House of Commons when it was yes. announced. Tell us more about the reaction. Yes. Um, you know, there were some people who, when they were coming, because obviously not everyone understood that you know, the House of Commons was suspended, which also means the committees are suspended and all other work is suspended for the day uh, on the Hill. Um, and so some MPs, you know, that were coming in, uh, you know, for question period didn't know yet. And so the shock as well outside the Commons uh, was quite palpable as well. He's being described, you know, as a class act, a bridge builder. There's a reason why uh, such sadness and sorrow and heartfelt sadness and sorrow is being expressed by all parties, uh, because he really was well-liked and respected um, on all sides of the aisle. Have a listen to some of the reaction. He got sick right after the last election. Uh, I too was in hospital uh, recovering from a different kind of blood cancer. And Jim and I have spoken a lot in the last weeks and months uh, about the kind of treatments he was going through, not dissimilar to the ones that I went through. So we had that sad bond of both having had a form of blood cancer, and that's why it makes it, uh, I think, very difficult for so many of us. Yeah, I, um, I had the honor of sitting beside Jim. He was a wonderful human being, and um, I used to say to him every day, how are you feeling, Jim? And he said, every day counts. And most of us would love to be able to go out the way he did to the end, doing what he loved. Uh, it was an honor to be with him. All of us are, are shocked, saddened, and heartbroken. Um, I've known Jim 
since he was an MLA in Manitoba and president of Manitoba Business Council, um, somebody that, despite our partisan differences, I've always considered a friend. Uh, he's a great champion for Manitoba, and I know that uh, his family is, is uh, very heartbroken right now. I'll offer my sympathy and condolences. Now, we are still waiting for a statement from the Prime Minister, um, and that is expected at some point soon. Uh, we have seen an outpouring, you know, whether it's on Twitter or social media or just in, in statements through um, press releases, you know, from business leaders, from Indigenous groups, uh, you know, international figures, the... Uh, former U.S. Ambassador to Canada, Bruce Heyman, also um, putting out a statement of condolences how much he enjoyed working with Mr. Carr. So, uh, you know, really such a wide range of uh, responses uh, from beyond the political mm -hmm. sphere. Karina, thank you. The CBC's Karina Roman live in Ottawa. Foreign Affairs Minister Melanie Jolie spoke to reporters about Jim Carr in the foyer of the House of Commons. She reflected on the friendship that grew from their very first meeting. The first time I met Jim was in 2015. It was our first cabinet swearing in. We bumped into each other. We were actually in, sitting side by side on the bus heading to Rideau Hall. And it clicked. We got along very well. His, his son would late, later worked for me as uh, my director of Pol parliamentary affairs, Ben. Uh, and, you know, politics runs in the family. Um, Jim was, was a bridge builder. He was a man that believed in, in the, the positive change of, that politics can bring. He was always very proud of Winnipeg. He was a, <laughs> a hobo player, had, had played in the Winnipeg uh, Symphonic Orchestra. He was also a, not only a patron for the arts, but a strong supporter of the business community in, in Winnipeg. And, you know, I think Canadians will remember him as being a, a strong voice for the prairies and a strong voice for positive change. And so to his family and loved ones, thank you for sharing dad and sharing your friend with us here in Ottawa and with the country. And I think Canada is a better place because Jim Carr worked every day to make it a better place. Liberal MP and Minister of Tourism Randy Boissonneau also shared his condolences today, calling Carr a mentor. Today is a great loss for Canada, for Manitoba, for the Prairie West, for Jim's family. He's a mentor. And uh, I said to my team, he's like my parliamentary dad. Uh, ben and I were colleagues in uh, Heritage, and uh, it's fitting to pause and to remember the life of a, a businessman, a great Canadian patriot, an oboist, a humanitarian, and that deep gravelly voice that was um, on uh, radio with Peter Zofsky when I was a kid. And I got to serve in Parliament with a great Canadian a great friend and, friend and a great mentor. Et nous allons um, se souvenir longtemps du travail de Jim Carr. Uh, thank you. Thankfully, he got his motion passed. And um, I think we can all hear the voice that he might have shared with us this Thursday in the House. Um, and I, my deep condolences to the Carr family and to everybody who's been touched by the love and uh, respect of the Honourable Jim Carr. And the CBC's Cam McIntosh is in Winnipeg, Jim Carr's home city. He joins us now with early reaction. And so, Cam, we're hearing from Jim Carr's family. What are they saying? Yes, Jim Carr's family released a statement just this afternoon, and I'll read a bit of it for you here, Andrew. 
Right up until the very end of his remarkable life, he was fighting for Winnipegers, Manitobans, and Canadians. He was extremely pleased to have his private member's bill, C-235, building a green prairie economy, passed through the House of Commons on December 8th. Working with his fellow members of Parliament across the country over the past few months on this important legislation filled him with energy and kept his spirits high. As a dedicated elected official, business and community leader in Manitoba over the last 30 years. Jim was loved and respected by so many and we know he will be profoundly missed. And we are starting to hear from other leaders here in Manitoba, from the Premier of Manitoba, Heather Stephenson. It's with a heavy heart that I offer my deepest sympathies and condolences to the family and friends of Jim Carr. Over the years, Jim and I worked on many projects together. I always admire his unfailing commitment to the betterment of Winnipeg, Manitoba and Canada. Thank you, Jim. And from Winnipeg's newly elected mayor, Scott Gillingham, Jim was a giant in our community, and his work as a musician, journalist, arts and business advocate, and provincial, federal elected official strengthened our city and touched the lives of many Manitobans. He will be missed. And we're see starting to see more and more of this type of tribute coming in right now for Jim Carr. We also have a ca uh, camera over in his constituency, which is not too far from here. And the news is hitting some people over there uh, pretty, pretty hard. Jim Carr was a respected business leader in the community. He was a respected politician. Uh, Winnipeg South Centre was his constituency. Now that has been a long time liberal seat here in Winnipeg. You may recall Lloyd Axworthy held that seat uh, through the end of the 70s, the 80s and the 90s. Jim Carr flipped that seat back to the Liberals in 2015 and had held on to it ever since, winning with slightly bigger and bigger outcomes each time he ran. So respected in his uh, riding, respected in the community here, and certainly respected by politicians and business leaders of all political stripes. Mm -hmm. And right across the country, and he said that he loved every square meter of Canada, every square meter of this country, but can you walk us through his contribution to the people of Winnipeg and indeed Manitoba? So Jim Carr isn't the type of politician where you point to a building in downtown Winnipeg or somewhere else and say, hey, Jim Carr did that. That was a Jim Carr project. What Jim Carr did was really work in the background. The Business Council of Manitoba is a good example of that. I was founded in the late 90s, and it's really a nonpartisan advocacy group that gets basically politicians and business together to work for the betterment of the community. And that was the kind of work Jim Carr really liked to do. The way it's been, you know, you can really describe him as a liberal that, you know, was part of the social tradition of the Liberal Party, but was also very business minded. He was a guy who was just as comfortable walking down Bay Street, Toronto, as he was walking down Portage Avenue here in Winnipeg. So really trying to bring bring about ways that the business community could really help in the social fabric of a community like Winnipeg and out here on the prairies. And of course, that kind of work became really important for the prairies after 2019, when basically the Liberals were all but wiped out, right? So we have Jim Carr and a few Liberal seats here in Winnipeg, but you know Ralph Goodale, who had this, been this champion for the prairies for a very long time in Ottawa, both in government and in opposition, he was gone. Jim Carr really kind of picked up that mantle uh, at the time in 2019. He was learning that he was sick. In fact, I was there election night at his uh, constituency uh, party um, covering things off there. And we had learned just after that that Jim Carr had gotten this diagnosis. And it was a bittersweet night for him. Um, he, he acknowledged to us later. But at that time, he left the federal cabinet and basically took on a new role as basically special representative for the prairies for the prime minister. And he really relished that role, being that point person for Alberta, Saskatchewan and Manitoba, which by then had all elected conservative governments, someone that they could talk to, to talk to basically get a voice in with the federal cabinet or with the prime minister's office. And that's not to say by any stretch that people always saw eye to eye or continue to, but Jim Carr was certainly a respected figure, whether it was here in Manitoba, whether it was in Saskatchewan or dealing with say the oil interests or the, or the provincial government of Alberta as well. Kim, thank you. The CBC's Kim McIntosh live in Winnipeg.